What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Bourbon Ranch. Today, Hidden Barn, Batch 2. I didn't even know there were two batches of this out, but we got it. Finally, got my hands on one of these, um, but I've been hearing some uh, not so positive things about this bottle, so was kind of nervous about this release. Um, as you can see, I've had a little bit of it already. I've wanted to give it a fair chance. I've wanted to get into it and give my honest, unbiased, non-chill filtered answer and review of this bottle as I possibly can. You guys know me. I just tell you how it is, okay? So same thing with the batch one, 110 proof, awesome, 55%. They got a great old story on the back of the bottle. I'll spare you all of that mumbo jumbo but huge shout out again to james b for being awesome he hooked me up with the batch two um he also sent me a, a sample of the batch one that we will compare to it these are small batches but with this being such a small little distillery uh, project they're Small batches are truly small. It's not like a big dog. It's not like Jim Beam's small batch. That could be several hundreds or thousands of barrels. Who knows? It could just be any number. These guys probably actually have very small batches, so I would imagine the consistency from batch to batch probably wouldn't be as close. So I imagine some variance. So that's what we're going to do. We'll get into the batch two and then later compare it to the batch one. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Okay, I, I, right up front, I've obviously already had some of this and was not my favorite thing. Okay, but I wanted to revisit this and make sure and let it open up because I've been thinking about this. I've been thinking about all the hype that kind of was around and surrounding Jackie leaving Old Forester and going on to this new venture and I, I think I have some very specific opinions about it and some of those I think could apply to everyone who is drinking and grading and judging this or whatever they're doing. Um, so let's get into the review first, then we will talk about that. So on the nose, I'm honestly glad that I have opened this up and have drank it down a little bit because I'm telling you when I first opened this I I nearly hated it I was like what the heck is this I will say it's it's coming along it's it's getting better it's this is not what I remembered that fresh neck pour I was just so astounded and mad and that's why I kind of wanted to just take a step back try and give it a fair chance but it's not going to stop me from talking about what I don't like. Very grain heavy. Like grain, grain, grain. Just almost yeasty. Like I can, I can taste the base yeast that went into this. And I don't know, maybe that's your thing. Almost a... There's a white dog characteristic to this. And I've been thinking about what that could be. It doesn't... I'm not saying that it smells literally like unaged, you know, white dog, but white dog to me has this butteriness, a creaminess, like on this, even on the nose, you can tell like, is this, this is gonna be creamy or something. It's just a buttery characteristic to it. And it's a bit weird to me that I get it on this. Um, and then that mixed with all of this grain and corn. But I will say there are nice notes in there. There's a, a heavy caramel that I'm, I'm really liking. So it's not all bad. Let's taste it. Unfortunately for this bottle, and I think maybe a lot of what people aren't liking about it, is that yeasty, grainy quality that I got on the nose is pretty prevalent on the front of the palate. Just very aggressively there. The back of the palate 
is where I'm liking it. I like it, I'm cool with it, I think it's done well, but man, I just, what the heck? It's almost cereal-like grain to me, like an unfrosted mini wheat. Come on, I'll frost my wheats. I don't know if it's just a subconscious thing to associating Jackie's Icon with Old Forester. You can't do that, but maybe I'm getting some sort of nutty characteristic, like banana nut characteristic, but here's the other kicker. It's like an uncooked banana nut bread, like the dough. You made the dough, you got the banana nut and stuff in there, and then you just didn't cook it long enough, and you could still smell the dough and yeast, and you know what I'm saying? Or am I crazy? Really, this just has a big craft vibe to it. And, you know, that's something I wanted to mention. This isn't some big conglomerate who has the power and access to all of these barrels and aging different... We don't have that. This is small-time guys making whiskey, okay? The Neely family is not a big operation. So I feel like we had some sort of false hype or false i mean i don't know what we were expecting like were you expecting jackie leaves old forester she joins here birthday bourbon 2.0 she didn't make this okay she is not the distiller she's the blender so she showed up to the puzzle maker he made the puzzle pieces and said hey put this together make a picture out of these i just don't know if it's really there yet for me i mean it's still young and that's the same thing you apply it to every other craft distillery that we have. You know, it's just not on the same level as the big dogs, okay? So I think a lot of us had maybe this false expectation that it was going to be another top dog. I guess my issue comes from the price. And this is like 60, 70, 75 dollars. No. But within saying that, I have to stop myself and say pretty much everything that's craft and at 110 proof or barrel strength, anything craft in that proof, $60 seems to be the start point, okay? It doesn't matter if it's two, five, 60, $70 for craft. All right, with that being said, let's go ahead for a little bit of the batch one and see how or if they're different. I think they're going to be. Like I said, these small batches are pretty small. All right, the batch one. Wow, yeah. Huh. This one's, they're different. They're different. Batch one is definitely lighter, maybe a little more vanilla forward. In the batch two now, there might like a butterscotch or something type of note. Butterscotch, caramely note that coming up. Pretty good. I think I like the, the nose the best of batch two, even over the palate. I, it, it smells, the more you smell it, and the more you let it sit, it gets better. Still a little bit of that grain up front. I mean, it it is, it's young. And I think that note is going to stand out to a lot of people, and I don't know how they're gonna take it. I don't think you're gonna drink this and be like, wow, that sure does taste like a $70 bottle. I think you're gonna be like, what? Why am I getting that note? Yeah, going back, there's a dark, dark presence of some sort. <laughs> there's demons in the glass. <laughs> dark presence, like a, like a heavy, maybe thick butterscotch caramel note on the back end. The back of the palette to me is where this really shines. Um, so honestly, let me just give my final thoughts because I've been ranting over this. Hidden Barn, okay? I am gonna stick with my main thought and issue with this bottle is the price. I just don't think this is in, you know, we're bourbon drinkers. There's a lot of bourbon and not a lot of money to go around to buy it, especially in this market 
you know, there's so many and you just want to try them all, you have to pick and choose what you're buying. My argument and your argument probably is I can name you 10 bottles cheaper than this that I would grab majority of the time. Um, you could apply that logic to everything though, so I'm playing devil's advocate. I don't think you should go and buy the hype of this is Jackie Zykan, I must buy that. You know, she's great, she blends really good stuff, but if you're limited and that was your only selling point, and you know, I think that kind of rubbed some people the wrong way was how she was like, this is the best stuff I've ever had, come buy it. I mean, it's marketing, you gotta sell your stuff, but some people probably were rubbed the wrong way. Price aside, I think, honestly, I, I encourage all of you, let it sit a little bit and go back to it, because I'm telling you right now, if I would have filmed this video off of the, the neck pour of this, it would have been a very much different video. I was angry, I was like, what the heck is this? The grain note on the neck pour was through the freaking roof. It tasted like I was just eating raw corn. It seems to be opening up and changing a little bit. So if you've already had this and you didn't like it, give it some time and revisit it. If you still don't like it, guess what? Screw them, they'll go buy another one. But I will say, if you have the chance to try this, like try it at a bar or have a friend give you a sample, do something if you're curious, especially if you aren't comfortable with spending $70 because I really don't think, like if I finish this bottle, there's no way I'm gonna go search for another batch too. It's just, I'm not gonna do it. If you're someone who hates craft whiskey, then you might just wanna kind of pass on this one. It has good notes, but there are craftiness notes about it. And eh, just seeing how different the batch one and two are, you know, that's promising. I think, for one, I think it's cool. I think the small batches really show how different even a small batch, I have no idea how many barrels go into their small batch, but however small it is, there are variances and it shows, I don't know, room for improvement, room for growth. It, it just makes it look promising. Um, hopefully though, we can you know, sort out some prices. I get it, craft guys, smaller, don't have the resources, things are more expensive for them and they gotta make money. I get it, but we can't sympathy buy. So there we have it, Hidden Barn. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, hit the like button on your way out of here. If you're not subscribed, if you're new, hit the subscribe button. If you wanna support me more, if you wanna get access to cool glasses, bourbon ranch glasses, check out the Patreon page. You can join for as little as $1 a month and you get access to exclusive barrel picks. We got three of them coming soon, so you might wanna go over. And until next time, guys, I'm Trev Wilson. I'll see you in the next video.